My evil twin has something he wants to say. Please send money. I thought we agreed on subscribe to this channel. I don't know, that works better for me. Developing a company's brand image is a black art. Cadillac has a luxury reputation, but arguably, most people still think it only builds showy land yachts. And yeah, Escalade embraces that, but the CT4 certainly doesn't. It's a quietly styled small sedan with the same wheelbase as the outgoing ATS it replaces, but five inches longer. CT4 is going up against the likes of Audi A3, BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe, and Mercedes A-Class. All of those are front-wheel drive based vehicles. This Cadillac is rear-wheel drive based. All-wheel drive is a $2,500 option that my tester has. This premium luxury model gets two engine choices. The base 2.0-liter twin-scroll turbo makes 237 horsepower and gets an 8-speed transmission. I'm driving the optional dual volute turbocharged 2.7 liter four cylinder with 310 horses and 350 pound feet of torque. The dual volute design keeps exhaust pulses separated before reaching the compressor wheel. It minimizes the pressure going back into the engine for efficiency and responsiveness. You'll find this engine in the Chevy Silverado pickup. Seriously. The 2.7 liter shifts gears with a 10 speed transmission. It's controlled with Cadillac's precision shifter. I find the mechanical prindle levers more precise, but yeah, I know, get off my lawn. There are drive modes. My mode means a driver can set up a combination of steering, throttle response, and transmission mapping exactly to their liking for instant recall. As you might imagine, the upgraded engine comes with extra scoots. This car will do the zero to 60 dash in about six seconds. All wheel drive adds some grip and weight. This one tips the scales at around 3,600 pounds. Low end torque is really good. Uh, the engine note though, a little bit unremarkable and a skosh coarse sounding, but the general quality of the driving experience is upmarket. This is a Cadillac after all, and a round of applause for a brand that hasn't abandoned sedans. Uh, talking to you, Lincoln. The overall driving dynamic of this car is surprisingly creamy for a small car. It's a very good blend of comfort and sport, uh, sort of leaning towards the comfort side. To get impressive magnetic ride control dampers that analyze every inch of the road to provide additional control and comfort, move up to the sportier CT4V with a little extra performance squeezed out of the 2.7 liter turbo. They're only on rear drive Vs though, not all wheel drive models. For everyday use, the premium luxury model is crisp and precise in corners. Cadillac doesn't get its due when it comes to chassis tuning. Here's the thing, not everybody wants knife edged handling. This car is comfortable and yet it still handles well. It really fits the bill for a lot of people. It's not just comfortably balanced, it's quiet too. And Escalade isn't needed for that. And a lot of people like the trim size of the CT4, especially during city skirmishes. Fuel economy, uh, fuel economy is okay. Uh, remember, this is an all wheel drive model and the EPA rates the average at 23 miles per gallon. Let's talk about the automatic engine start stop system. Very common these days. This one is pretty unobtrusive on shutdown. Take your foot off the gas and you'll definitely notice the startup. I would turn it off in stop and go traffic. Otherwise, eh, you'll probably just leave it on. Being a Cadillac, you might expect it to have the best in active electronic safety tech. Uh, it's mid-pack, and to get advanced adaptive cruise control and automatic emergency braking, spring for the $1,200 driver's assistance package. The lane keep assist allows too much wandering between the stripes for my liking. One thing you might want to wait for, 2021 models will be available with the next generation Super Cruise. True hands-free driving, really good technology. My favorite semi-autonomous system. Cadillac recently announced it's a subscription service after a three year free trial, something that surprised me. I thought it was free forever once you bought the car. The new system adds automated lane changes. 
This is an entry-level caddy, but it looks pretty good in here, not up to Mercedes level with its ambient LED light piping, but certainly Audi A3 grade. This, right next to the interface screen that you're always looking at, could be richer though, and Cadillac needs its own font. This one is in many GM products. Door pockets aren't lined to eliminate rattles, but all of the stitching is tight and real. Plus, the door releases fall very nicely to hand. I'll point out that the powered windows are whisper quiet. All of the modern touches are here, wireless charging, that's good. And I like this slot for the co-pilot. There's a charge cord inside the console. Seats are heated and vented, comfortable too, but not overly bolstered for aggressive cornering. Heated wheel too, love those. Cadillac doesn't have a fancy voice-activated assistant like Mercedes MBUX, but it does have Alexa, which allows you to do things like start and stop your engine or check your fuel level from home or while you're driving. You can ask for directions or ask random questions. What's your favorite car? I've got three favorites cars. The Firebird that's piloted by Kit, the DeLorean from Back to the Future, and then Herbie the Adorable Love Bug. Ah, well, General Motors car made the list, but uh, Pontiac, rest in peace. As for the rest of the user interface, GM does a good job with those. The touchscreen at 8 inches isn't panoramic, but the response is excellent and the flow of the layout is logical. And if you prefer, use the knob controller to keep fingerprints off the screen. There's a volume control here and here. I also like these piano key buttons. There's just the right amount of those. In addition to Alexa, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are on board. They're standard. Let them duke it out to win your affection. We're both five foot nine. I've adjusted the seat for a comfortable driving position. Evil twin, take it away. Gotta remember CT4 is not a huge vehicle. The biggest problem back here is headroom. I have that much. Otherwise, knee, leg, and foot room are actually kind of generous for a vehicle this size. Thigh support is excellent. You could actually drop these cushions down an inch or two for more noggin room. Door openings kind of small, so getting car seats in and out might be a bit of a chore. It is the first rig I've seen in a long time without door pockets. But at least you can stash things here and here. Buy one of those USB adapters and you're good to charge your phones up. No heated seats. They're not available. The big drive shaft tunnel means keep it to two back here, but I will say it is really comfortable. You might think the XT4 crossover would be better for hauling stuff than the CT4 sedan here. Maybe, maybe not. For starters, the boot is trimmed the way a Cadillac should be. The seats split and fold, no ski pass through though. Extra space under here, uh, yep, but no spare tire, something that the XT has. And really, the crossover has over twice as much cargo room. The CT4 measures 10.7 cubic feet, or five packs of TP. At the premium luxury level, and dipped into $625 shadow metallic paint, CT4 blends into the background. It's not a showy looking sedan. The front is clean and purposeful with the vertical DRLs that define Cadillac. So is the rump with fewer lines and fuss than Big Brother CT5. The C pillar is nondescript as well without the fives flourish, which I can do without. Not sure where else designers would hide the seam, but it does stand out here. The benefits to CT4's wallflower look is that people can enjoy a nicely crafted car without looking like they're bragging or boasting. Laugh if you want, but that would be my wife. She likes quality stuff, but doesn't like to shout about it. That's the very definition of the CT4. All right, let's wrap this up with red light, green light. Green lights. There's an overall goodness to the CT4, a touch of velvet to the driving experience that says Cadillac. The solid chassis and rear drive handling dynamics are exactly what you would want from a modern compact luxury sedan, comfortable but crisp. The cabin materials and finish are on the higher end in class. GM is improving its interiors. Yellow lights. Uh, there's a touch of gruffness from the 2.7 liter engine. Check that on your test drive. CT4's design isn't for people wanting to make an entrance. It's a very subtle sedan. Those little plastic panels near the interface screen look low rent and no dramatic ambient interior lighting. Red lights. If you carry tall people, make sure they don't hit their head in the back seat. I'm not impressed with the lane keep system and good electronic safety technology costs extra, but the fact that Super Cruise is coming is a big win. 
A base rear drive CT4 retails for about $34,000, similar to A3, A220, and 2 Series Grand Coupe. This all-wheel drive model with the bigger engine is pretty much loaded and just crests 50 grand. That's more expensive than the Germans by two to three grand, but GM tends to set MSRPs high for lots of haggle room. Do yourself a favor, get some price quotes before thinking it's too rich for your budget. And test drive, because a lot of brands have reputations they may or may not deserve. Cadillac's CT4 is a quiet, low-key entry into the premium segment. Got to say, when I had the CT5V, I got a surprising amount of people coming up to admire it. It was like the CT4 was wearing Harry Potter's invisibility cloak. But hey, buy the car you love, don't worry what others think. Why impress people you'll never meet? And your friends and family already know what a knucklehead you might be. Wondering what this number is? It represents the torque rating in Newton meters. The 2.7 is rated at 475, so Cadillac is actually rounding down, and the T is for terrific. <laughs> no, turbo. Once again, special thanks to Martin Campbell, who's in the back seat, masked up, of course. Couldn't do these reviews without Martin. Thanks, Martin. Yep. Did you hear that? He said, yep. He's a man of few words. And I'll point out that I shot this when the smoke from the Oregon and California wildfires was thick as fog. If you know anything about video production, cameras need to be white balanced. In other words, I show it a piece of white paper to register the correct color temperature. Here's my first shot, properly adjusted. As the morning went on and more particulates rolled in, the color temperature changed so gradually, I didn't notice it. This is the last shot. <laughs> to think I was breathing that in. I color grade each shot in editing. That's why you didn't see it on the video. You made it to the end and the fun fact, one of the many reasons why people subscribe to my channel, this time it's stuff that Cadillac pioneered. You gotta remember back in say 1912, cars were crank started and it was very difficult to do and could be very dangerous. In fact, the Cadillac founder, Henry Leland's good friend, was killed when the crank recoiled and hit him in the head. And so as long as he was electrifying the starter, he decided, hey, let's throw on electric headlights. Very useful because you gotta remember back then, not a lot of street lights. Uh, moving up in history a little bit, the mid 1960s, set and forget climate control. Yeah, Cadillac pioneered that. Uh, these are all things that we take for granted. Now, one more thing before I go, Leland started another American luxury car company. It's still going on today, anybody? Anyone? Lincoln. Yeah, he started Lincoln. Apparently, he was a much better engineer than accountant. He ended up having to sell to Henry Ford at a fire sale price. Henry got a good deal on that. Again, subscribe. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.